Have you created an elevator pitch for your practice? You're probably familiar with the concept of elevator pitch and why it's so important to very quickly communicate the unique value proposition that you have and why prospective patients should partner with you on their health restoration. But uh, beyond the obvious communication angle, creating an elevator pitch really forces you to get clear who you want to serve, what problem you're solving, why your solution is better, and why they should choose you, right? So in this video, we're going to talk about the structure of an elevator pitch and all the elements that you have to consider. And I'll give you a couple examples of how you can get started with creating your own elevator pitch. Now, an elevator pitch should be short. It should be high impact. It should be specific and memorable. And when you follow this formula that I'm just about to present to you, um, you will see that all these elements are come together in a nice package. Now, the first thing in your elevator pitch is defining the problem that your target audience has because people are usually motivated by self-interest. So when you start with an elevator pitch, start with something that's immediately resonating with them. This is why they wanna hear the end of the pitch and they're not mentally tuning out. So start with them. What's the problem that they're having and why is this problem so relevant in their life? You know, there should be something in there that obviously suggests that there's reasons why they haven't been able to solve that problem. And so that's the great opening for your elevator pitch. Now, the second thing in the elevator pitch is your solution, i.e. how is your solution different from what they've tried before? How is your solution more believable or why has it a higher likelihood of success compared to everything what they've done before. And so that really requires you to think through what have they tried before, what didn't work, and what do I have to present as a solution so that they can go forward thinking, okay, this is an altogether different approach. This is very different from what I have tried before. You're not the sixth person suggesting exactly the same thing that the previous five people have suggested, right? Now, the third thing in your elevator pitch is your credibility. So why are you the expert that is a perfectly situated to help your audience with their problem with your solution, right? And so that is maybe your past history that you have gone through the same struggles and that you don't want them to suffer another three, five years uh, figuring it out on your own. Maybe your track record helping patients just like them, but there has to be some credibility play, whether it's your training, it's your experience, your history, maybe it's some of your certifications that you have, but you know, this third element in the, your pitch is really designed to put people at ease that you are the expert that they have been looking for all along. Now, the fourth piece of the elevator pitch is the value. Why is your solution so valuable? You know, why is it worth so much more money um, than what it actually costs? And so that preemptively addresses the price objection. Um, so you have to explain in some way why this is a good deal, why this is a smart investment. And oftentimes people look immediately at the cost of what your initial appointment costs, but they don't remember, you know, the ancillary costs of not taking action. Now, what does it mean if they don't restore their health now? They could be losing the job, they could lose their marriage, their family. You know, it gets so much harder to get out of this hole that they're in. You have to provide a reason why now is the time to do this, you know, so that's basically baked into this value equation and why your approach, maybe it's in a virtual health consultation, maybe it's in addition to what they're doing with their uh, primary care provider, that this is a smart play. The fifth element in the elevator pitch is the risk reversal. So people are naturally skeptical. They have already been told that, hey, I can help you. And then that person didn't help them or couldn't help them. They have maybe been to a number of uh, practitioners, a number of specialists even and yet they still have the same problem, right? The labs come back normal, but yet they don't feel, feel fine. And so what you have to do in the risk reversal is you have to de-risk the next steps of partnering with you. And this is where you could probably pitch that uh, free discovery call or gut health consultation, if you will, um, that shows them, hey, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You can't make new decisions based on old information. So, um, you know, figure out a way to take away the risk, the skepticism, allow them to ease into the relationship that they can just try things on without having to commit. Because again, 
as you invite people into a discovery call, it may be that people are saying, why is this discovery call free? They don't know this concept, right? They come from a conventional medicine background and there's never a free consultation. And there's always a catch with it. So you have to think about how to reverse the risk for them, overcome their skepticism, overcoming probably years of bad experiences with other health providers or their own journey trying to figure it out on their own so that they feel confident of going forward. And the final element in the discovery call is the call to action. And so you can't leave it up to chance what they should be doing next. So you have to figure out what is the next step that you want them to do. And that may depend if they see this in the context of an about video on your website or maybe the video on your YouTube channel, the call to action may be different there as opposed to if you meet with them one in person, uh, if you're in a one on one. And so this is what you have to think about, but you want to be very specific that it should feel very simple as a next step and it should feel logical so that people feel, OK, this makes sense. Let me step into the next part. Uh, believe me, people need to be told, they need to be spoon fed what to do step by step by step. And that's how you should end your elevator pitch. Now, I'll put some extra resources somewhere around this video with examples of what elevator pitches look like. Uh, I want to end this video with a practical list of where you can use your elevator pitch. And if we're starting first with the digital version, you know, you could put it on your website, maybe on the homepage of your website or the about page. Uh, uh, we have a short video maybe this video turns into you know an expanded elevator pitch but that's one place where you can put it um you can use it as something that gets posted in your facebook group uh, it could occasionally appear in your social media feeds whether that's on your facebook page instagram pinterest maybe it could be a version that you have on TikTok to introduce your practice and to tell people how you help them and what the next best steps are you also can use it whenever you um introduce people to your tribe. So people opt in uh, for a lead magnet. And then on the thank you page, you're introducing them uh, to your practice. So you can say, hey, thank you so much for uh, requesting the resource. It's on its way to your inbox. But while you wait, let me tell you a little bit about my practice. And then you move into the elevator pitch, right? Um, so that everyone that opts in into your mailing list gets to see that video and becomes familiar with um, what you have to share and how you help people. And then obviously in person, you can use the elevator pitch whenever you meet new people. Um, this could be at conferences, it could be at um, events, at uh, workshops, and um, anytime you meet a new person, you could uh, deliver that elevator pitch. And again, um, the key there when you are meeting one-on-one -on -one is that you can bore them to death. So you have to be uh, to the point, it has to be high impact, has to be specific and memorable and don't drone on too long just go for the shorter version create enough intrigue that the person says oh let me tell you more right so it's an open invitation to continue the conversation and to dig deeper so the elevator pitch is really just the first layer designed to create interest and um, then go from there so i hope this was helpful i would love to hear your questions about what you need to do in order to create an elevator pitch whether you have one and anything else that you have questions about and let's continue the conversation